Hey guys, back here with a video response to LV. I have a little bit of free time to do this today because the snow that's going on outside will ha has actually cancelled some college stuff I had to do today. So I have a little bit of free time that I wasn't expecting. Um, still haven't seen the New Japan Destruction pay-per-view. Still looking for a non-torrent way of seeing that show in full, not just the select matches because, you know, New Japan can put on a fun show from beginning to end, so I'm waiting for that to happen. Should happen pretty soon, and then I'm probably going to talk about it a bit. But, this video. LV made a video a few days ago talking about the need for the total package, and why he feels that that is the wrong way to judge a wrestler in terms of how good he is and how valuable he is, I guess. I felt compelled to do this because I have previously expressed a desire to see more guys with the total package in wrestling. Um, when I did my response to Daniel, um, Daniel Talks Pro Progress, about the US Indies, that was what I wanted to see more from out of Ring of Honor, in terms of their wrestlers. Um, so let's get started with this video, this video response. There's going to be two main points in this. Um, the first one being, I think that when wrestling fans talk about the total package, they're talking about the next Hogan, the next Rock, the next Austin, um, the next leader, so to speak, because there's a very clear difference between being built up to the point where you can be world champion and being built up to the point where you can carry the company. You know, and I think those who carry the company do need the total package behind them. Although I will, as I will explain in the second point, I think that my understanding of a total package might be a little different, or at least was not discussed in your video, so, but we'll get to that in a bit. The first point, second to the first point, the current argument, we have those guys who can carry the company, those guys who can bring success to the company, the guys who might be able to dig pro wrestling out of the rut that it's in right now. Um, even if it boils down to my personal taste, putting aside the popularity of the pro wrestling product as a whole, even if it boils down to my personal taste, I still want to see the total package out of the very top guys because just take a look at the US Indies now. You know, you have so many guys with that, I guess, junior heavyweight spotty style. When it comes time to decide who you want to be your main eventers, um, your really top main eventers, you do need to have guys that stand out a little bit. Otherwise, there's no clear distinction between, you know, a main eventer and an ordinary mid carder apart from, you know, just being better in the ring, I suppose. Um, I mean, let's use Japanese Japanese guys as an example. You know, is there really a noticeable difference between Naruki Doi, Masato Yoshino, and Kota Ibushi? Because I sure as hell can't see it. You know, they can all deliver in the ring, but if you have a roster full of guys in that mold, it would just be very stale, I guess. You know, whereas you have guys like, you know, Naomichi Marafuji, Yamato, and BB Hulk, who offer a lot of natural charisma. And you also have Kenta and Shingo, who work so damn hard that they get this sort of workhouse charisma about them, if that makes any sense at all. So, that would be my personal taste. But going back to the thinking about it in terms of wrestling's popularity as a whole, because we all want wrestling to be popular again. You know, more fans means more friends, more interest means more new wrestlers, and a better crowd definitely means a better product. So, the guys you're going to carry your company around need that total package factor. You know, history has shown this. Um, let's use LB's example because he brought up AJ Styles. And let's work under the assumption that, I'm pretty sure LB didn't say this himself, but let's work under the, assu the assumption that wrestling fans want AJ Styles to be the next Shawn Michaels. People forget HBK was never considered to be the face of the WWE. You know, when he first debuted, it was Hulk Hogan. During the early to mid 90s, it was Brett. And the same Brett who was on top at a time when the WWE was losing popularity dangerously. Um, and then HBK being absent during the Attitude Era, we move on to the early to mid 2000s where you had Brock Lesnar. And then we move on to Cena. You know, HBK got a lot, a lot out of what he had, but he was never the face of the WWE. He was never the guy people... Okay, I'm not going to say he was never the guy that people paid to see, because that's not really true, but he was never the main attraction, I guess. Um, you can put AJ Styles in a, in a HBK-like role in TNA, but he doesn't fill the role of a Rock or an Austin in TNA, because he lacks that total package, and TNA desperately needs um, a guy that can fill the role of a Rock or an Austin. So, okay, I think the main point to get out of the main thing to get out of this point is you don't need the total package to be a main eventer, but you do need it to carry the company. That's what I'm hoping. That's why I'm hoping to see Davey beat Roderick for the title at Final Battle because because Roderick can be a main eventer, but he can't carry Ring of Honor. You know, 
Um, when Benoit won the title, Benoit being a pretty um, good comparison to Roderick, he was still not um, the guy, I guess. Well, okay, that's a bad example because um, when Benoit won the title, um, they were in a transition point because Brock left. Okay, that's a bad example. Forget that example. Let's move on to the second point. And this is important because it'll clear up all the holes in the first point. Um, people are surely questioning whether or not the guys that carried wrestling promotions in the past, guys like Hogan, Rock, and Austin, were in fact the total package because their wrestling ability was questionable. Here's the thing, though, and this ties right into LB's example of the Ultimate Warrior. Charisma creates exciting matches. If you've got a lot of charisma, that gives you your wrestling ability because your matches will be exciting and they'll be fun to watch. You don't even need a great storyline to back it up. You just if your charisma can make fans care about you, then they care whether you win or lose, and that's when you start taking advantage of that by working drama into the match and keeping at the forefront the question of who's going to win or lose. That's how it worked for Hogan, that's how it worked for Warrior, Austin, Rock, Cena, all those guys, you know. Um, can it work in the reverse? Can wrestling ability create charisma? Yes, it can, in my opinion, but it, in my opinion, again, it doesn't create guys that can carry the company. It creates guys like HBK, who can become legends, but they can't, they can't be the biggest money makers. They just can't do it. Um, the only exception that springs to my mind is Brock Lesnar, who definitely could have been that guy if he had stayed around, stayed around a little longer. You know? And then, of course, you have Ric Flair, who could be best described as an absolute phenomenon in the sense that he had the charisma and the wrestling ability to equally high degrees. So, you know, make your own judgments on that. Um, I'm not talking about mic skills, keep that in mind. I'm not talking about mic skills, because in my mind, mic skills barely come into it. Um, that's just a nice bonus, I guess. If you look at Samoa Joe, he's got that badass charisma that draws you to him, and the fact that he, that he can wrestle in the ring is just a nice bonus. Um, he's not really the best talker, but the charisma, in my opinion, is enough to make him an ideal leader for TNA's future. It's just too bad that we missed that boat a long, long time ago. Um, so there's my response to you, LV. I hope I gave you something to think about. I will see you guys later. Peace.